Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf. It's book prize season, obviously, not only our own, very own um, booktube book prize, uh, the winner of which will be announced uh, beginning of October, but of course it's also booker prize season. Um, and I decided uh, to make videos about the shortlisted books that I've read, there are six in total, so you will find all the titles down below in the show notes. Um, and I want to review them individually, and then after uh, I've read them, make a summary of what I think, uh, which book I think is the best. So this is the first um, in a series, and for this video, I will review the, the biggest book of all, the Duck Book. This brick of a book by Lucy Elman, Duck's Newberry Port. Lucy Elman is an American-born British writer. She lives in Scotland. She was born 1956 and she published her first book in 1988. I've never read uh, any of her work, so this is my first experience with the author. Um, and despite the size, um, it's over a thousand pages, just over a thousand pages, a thousand and twenty pages. Um, this became a bit of a booktube darling almost. Uh, people are buying this book left and right, even people who are normally not interested in the Booker Prize. So congratulations, first of all, to, to the author and the small press uh, that published the book, because it's always great if a book gets that much attention. Um, this is, um, the book is set in Ohio and it's told from the perspective of a middle-aged 45-ish uh, woman um, who lives with her husband, a second husband, and her four uh, young children. The uh, eldest, uh, the daughter, is from a previous marriage, so she's in her teenage years, 15, 16, um, and uh, the uh, th three remaining children <clears throat> are from the second marriage and younger. It's told in a stream of consciousness. So the, um, uh, it, it has no full stops. You probably know that already because the book has been reviewed so, often, so much. But it's like one huge sentence. Um, there are no full stops, only commas. And each new thought is introduced with uh, the... Uh, the sentence uh, or the, the part sentence, the fact that, and then she introduces a thought or something. Um, it's a stream of consciousness put pushed to, to the limits because it's, um, it's thoughts, random thoughts, uh, lists, shopping lists, lists of cities, lists of... Uh, um, you know, when you when you when your own mind just goes uh, on a sidetrack. So that's the way it is written. But in that stream of consciousness, you slowly get the story of uh, this woman. Um, uh, she uh, survived. She's a, she was treated for cancer. She had a college education, was a teacher, but very unhappy. And now she is a housewife slash a uh, pie baker so she bakes a uh, pakes uh, she bakes pies uh, on demand she has a website and then people you know can order uh, uh, the cakes um in between this huge stream of consciousness there are breaks every i would say 200 pages um and in those breaks, it's page, page and a half, um, uh, the, st the story is told of a mountain lioness who wanders uh, in a circular uh, movement uh, from one place to the next. She has cups, then the cups, uh, she, she loses them. So these parts about the mountain lioness are written in quote-unquote just normal prose. But back to the main part of the book, the stream of consciousness. Um, there are uh, recurring thoughts within that seemingly random stream of consciousness. Um, there are recurring themes, uh, one of which is Laura Ingalls Wilder. Uh, her life and her books, they come up repeatedly all throughout the book. 
um, the marriage of the narrator to her second husband, Leo, who is a teacher, um, and the life of the four children is another recurring theme that comes up again and again. There are certain movies and movie stars that will repeat it, uh, books as well, reference to books. And um, I think one of the, the dominant themes in this uh, uh, book is the relationship of the narrator to her parents and especially her mother who uh, became ill and died when the narrator was quite young. The mother became ill when uh, the narrator was in her early teens. Um, and the, the fact that uh, the narrator repeatedly tells us how uh, that the death of her mother and the illness of her mother broke her, um, even now, I think it's more than two decades, two and a half decades ago uh, that the mother died, um, is one of the important themes that, that will be repeated again and again and again throughout the book. And I think it's no coincidence that the title of the book refers to one of the stories uh, that the narrator tells us about her mother. Uh, when her mother was a, a little child, she almost drowned. Um, she saw a, a, a couple of ducks on a pond and she went into the pond and then was saved by the her older sister, Abby, from drowning. So I think the, the fact that the title uh, refers to the mother uh, already tells you when you read the book how important this uh, relationship uh, was and how important it is for the book. Um, now, there are a couple of booktubers who already reviewed the book. I will leave links uh, to their review down below. Eric from The Lonesome Reader, Alex from What Page Are You On, and Peg from The uh, Book Price Addict. And I think um, those reviews, especially Eric's and Peg's, are very positive. Probably they enjoyed the book um, or praised the book more than I will, um, even though I think there's... Uh, there are some aspects of it that are absolutely noteworthy and brilliant. Uh, first of all, the structure. Um, it's first, it, it's daring. That, that. <laughs> I mean, it's quite bold to write a thousand page book in this stream of consciousness, you know, without any full stops and just going on and on and on. Um, and when you, when you read it, you realize how much work the author put into the structure. It's not that she just, you know, uh, put random thoughts on the page. It, the book has a structure and it has a sort of an arc and a flow uh, of uh, uh, the, the story and the, 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 the seemingly random thoughts are not random at all. So I thought... Um, how the author actually wrote the book uh, was really admirable and brilliant. Um, also, the size of the book, I think, uh, is a contribution to um, this idea of the, the endless stream of consciousness. It, the book had to be big in order to work, in order to suck the reader into this woman's mind. That it's a thousand pages and not 750 or 900, that's a bit random. Um, and I think it would have worked just as well if it had been a, a little bit less. Uh, but okay, a thousand pages is also a selling point because, you know, it's something that you will note. And maybe 750 pages is not as um, special. Um, but in the end, I think, for me at least, the book didn't quite work, as at least not as well as it did, for instance, for Eric. Um, and the first reason is that I don't think the book travels that well, neither in time nor in place. Um, I think uh, readers in the US will be able to connect with the book more much more than I did, and not because of the the stories or the politics uh, that are mentioned, but the everyday life references. Uh, I mean, there are lots and lots and lots of references to just everyday life stuff, you know, from uh, KFC uh, to, to certain uh, jellos and just the things that you experience if you live in the U.S. And some of them I knew, some of them 
I don't. But even if I know what it means, it doesn't resonate that deeply with me, obviously. Uh, it also doesn't travel that well in time, I think, because it's, um, it's like a snapshot of a certain era without any deeper reflection or uh, analysis. And I, I don't think that it will stand the, the test of time in, like, say, 10 years or 20 years. The other thing that didn't quite work for me was the fact that I think if you write a book like that with this main portion being a stream of consciousness of one person, um, I, as a reader, I have to be able to at least somehow or in, in somewhat relate to this woman and find her uh, interesting. And I didn't. Uh, I thought uh, she was quite self-involved, whining, especially about uh, the death of her mother. Um, she was not, she that didn't came across for me as likable and that uh, prevented me from really engaging with her thoughts. Uh, I guess that the, you know, unlikability and the whining aspect is probably on purpose, I don't know, um, but um, even if it is, it didn't, it, it made me, um, after, I don't know, 600 pages or so, or 700 pages, just losing interest in the, the thoughts of this woman. And so I, I finished the book, uh, thinking, yeah, well, mm. and I don't think that's what the book uh, was supposed to do. So my conclusion after reading it is that it's certainly worth while trying, um, see for yourself whether the, the structure and the way of storytelling um, appeals to you, uh, whether the thoughts of the woman interest you enough to finish uh, a thousand pages. Um, but I didn't think it was a really great book. Um, so, I mean, whether it, de whether it deserves to win the booker will also depend on the other five on the list, so I can't really uh, comment on that for now. Um, but um, it, it wasn't an excellent uh, book for me in the end. So this was the first one of my booker shortlist review series. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm happy that I could put down the book this heavy thing. Um, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments whether you read the book or whether you're interested in reading the book. And I will see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.